Okay, today's case two is 69-year-old man with laterally spreading tumor of cecum. The findings on the colonoscopy showed 25 millimeter LSDG at the cecum. The patient was scheduled for ESD today. Good morning. Hi, um, thank you for inviting me to the, this uh, first international course, uh, live demonstration course in Tokyo. And uh, I will show you the ESD using a pocket creation method. Pocket creation method is uh, a, a new kind of method of ESD which, in which I create a submucosal pocket before cutting the surrounding mucosa. And um, my assistant is Dr. Fukuda and Ino, and uh, Professor Yahagi will moderate for us. As you have seen the, the, the lesion, uh, the lesion is located in the cecum. When you see the lesion, uh, lesion in cecum, you have to uh, identify the ileocecal valve that's here. And uh, this lesion has some distance from the ileocecal valve, unfortunately, and also uh, appendix orifice. You can see the appendix orifice here, so it's also uh, distant from the appendix orifice. And when you perform ESD, you have to consider three factors. One is the uh, con controllability, maneuverability of the endoscope, and the direction of gravity and the approaching angle to the, the uh, colonic wall. And then you select the patient's position. And ideally, the tangential approach and easy to control, and the lesion is located upside in terms of gravity is a good um, position. And for the pocket creation method, I make about two centimeter mucosal incision at the beginning, a little bit distant from the lesion. Okay, like this. Let's start. Yes. I use the uh, the flash knife BT with uh, uh, slim teeth. That is a new type of flash knife, flash, flash knife BTS. So about two centimeters, like this. Then I dissect, start dissection. The initial dissection is right below the mucosal layer, like this. And using the, uh, the what is this? Uh, swift coagulation mode. And at this stage, I use just a sheet. Sheet is placed below the mucosa and then dissect by lifting up the mucosa with the sheet of the uh, knife. And I will do it uh, about three times. Insert again. And knife. Insert the knife and then lift up. In this way, you can avoid cutting the, uh, the, the muscle layer. Different from the poem procedure, you shouldn't cut the muscle layer. <laughs> So you, you have to be careful. Then you can go into the submucosal space using the ST hood. Then I cut a little bit deeper part, deep, deeper level. And when I see blood vessel, uh, if you are just starting the, the ESD, it's better to avoid the, the uh, blood vessel and isolate the blood vessel and cut the submucosa like this. And after isolation, you can coagulate the blood vessel from the side, yes. From the side, yes. Hello? Yes. 
What solution did you use initially for the injection uh, before you did the incision? I used the mucoap, that is a sodium hyaluronate solution. Okay, that can keep a good elevation for a long time. Okay, need out. Yes. Then I gradually go deeper to the muscle layer. And after I come close to the muscle layer, I place down to the muscle layer, and you can see the muscle layer now, you see? Then uh, you can select the dissection level. Okay? Then avoid the muscle layer and dissect the heat. Okay? and dissect the uh, submucosal tissue. This, uh, tissue. this is a small blood vessel, so I can cut. Like this. And then I go into the pocket. By placing to the muscle By layer, you can, muscle you can see the muscle layer, layer level. You see? Layer can you see the whitish muscle yes. layer? The whitish then muscle you layer. can adjust then the, can the direction. Adjust. That is a good feature of the pocket creation method. Then I come close to the muscle layer. Okay. okay. So yes. I have one question yes. for you. Uh, I think this pocket creation method is very, very uh, good uh, because you can keep the dissection plane from the beginning of the submucosal dissection until the end. Yes. So basically, do you usually perform submucosal dissection for the entire su uh, submucosal layer uh, before starting the additional mucosal incision around the lesion? Yes, I try to dissect yes. as, uh, as, as, uh, as wide as possible to the size of the lesion. But uh, uh, sometimes, if the lesion is too big, it is sometimes very difficult to estimate the width of the lesion from the submucosal side. In that case, I start opening and the, the mucosal the, uh, incision, and then uh, I, if the submucosal pocket is not deep enough, then I uh, add some, uh, no, 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 uh, the injection. I want to show you the additional injection. Uh, after you see the muscle layer, this is the muscle layer, then, Injection right above the muscle layer makes the procedure much easier because the uh, you can elevate the submucosal tissue right above the muscle layer. Inject like this, so you s you can selectively stop. Uh, selectively, um, selectively um, elevate the submucosal tissue. Elevate the submucosal tissue. Can you switch back to the yes? Hello again. Okay, okay. I have been waiting okay. for uh, waiting you to show the you final show cut the of the procedure. Of the um, what I did was the uh, creation of the uh, the submucosal pocket. And in this case, this is a, a cecal lesion, and the lesion goes to the cecal side. So I dissect the, the mucosa, uh, the cecal side, using a special knife. This is the, uh, the safe knife. You can cut uh, laterally using this knife, even if you approach to tangential, no, the vertical approach. I can cut. And with this knife, like this, okay? And then, um, the both mucosal side remains. In this mucosa, it's already normal mucosa, 
no tumor here, so I can cut this uh, mucosa just like this. And when you perform ESD, you should be able to locate the region in any position. So when you perform colonoscopy, the, it's better to practice uh, positioning the region uh, in any direction. And if you can um, control the tip of the endoscope with any direction, that, that is very helpful for ESD procedure. In this case, I, I cut from this direction to this direction. That is the be best direction. So the uh, safe knife, please. And the endoscope I use is uh, Fujifilm RD, uh, oh no, 580RD that has a 3.2 millimeter channel, accessory channel. I, and, and the outer diameter is 9.8 millimeter. Like this. And then, uh, because of the selection of the patient's position, I can use the gravity for the traction. And I can, using the safe knife, I can cut either direction. For example, I can cut from the, uh, the anal side to the oral side, like this. So lateral way, I can cut. Or I can cut from the other side. Okay, insert the knife. And check the uh, position of the region, the, the, the edge of the region. Okay. And hook the, the mucosa. And using an end cut, this is an end cut eye. Professor Yamamoto? Yes. Uh, do you use a blade to cut or the, do you use a circular metal uh, on the tip of the ball? Yeah, I use the blade yeah, to cut the mucosa the and the circular metal to cut the submucosa. Okay. And then submucosal tissue then remains. So I cut. So th this new device is very uh, good not only for mucosal incision but also for submucosal dissection. Yes, when you approach to yes, the vertical the way, vertical then it is very good. So especially in the case uh, having perpendicular approach, this is very good device. Yes, I believe so. So only some submucosal tissue remains. Then, okay. Uh, by the way, I have another question that because uh, this is a region located at the uh, cecum, and especially in this area, there are usually a lot of fat tissue like this. And yes. in this particular situation, uh, the lens of endoscope becomes very dirty during the procedure. Do you have any secret to keep it clean during the procedure? Yeah, uh, the, it is very important to apply a good lens cleaner uh, the both sides of the, uh, the, the ST hood, the, uh, inside and outside. I use a... This, this is brand new lens yes. cleaner. That's a clear, <laughs> and this clear is very good. <laughs> yes, so you can keep a good endoscopic view, uh, even in the CCAM. When you see, see the blood vessel, I use a little bit of coagulation and cut with the end cut. What kind of uh, current uh, do you use for the coagulation of blood vessels? Uh, with this knife, I use uh, the swift coagulation. The same, swift coagulation, effect pole, and uh, 30 watt. So it's completely the same for the submucosal dissection setting? Yes, yes. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the colon, I use the same cut. Uh, yes, same setting. And this is the final dissection. Uh, even with the uh, vertical approach, it's not that difficult like this. Okay, finish of the procedure. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you.
So the, do you usually uh, coagulate the exposed blood vessels after the procedure? Uh, no, not in the colon. Only uh, very big blood vessels which had uh, uh, pulsation or actively bleeding blood vessels, I coagulate. But uh, I don't coagulate too much because the colon colonic wall is thinner than the stomach and uh, colonic, the bleeding, post-procedure bleeding is less common in the colon than in the stomach. Stomach. Probably rectal area find, is a uh, little bit di different. Yeah, right. Uh, this is yeah. bleeding, so I will coagulate. Coagulation forceps. But uh, when I use the coagulation forceps in the uh, in the colon, I will be more careful than in the stomach. And uh, in the duodenum, uh, you should be much more careful because the duodenal wall is very thin and uh, so the just by coagulation forceps you could make uh, um, too much burning of the duodenal mucos uh, muscle layer anyway uh, so this is four millimeter coagulus which is very good for the coagulation yes. in the colon you see, the only the blood vessel is grasped and wash and make sure it's grasped and pull back a little bit and away from the muscle layer, then coagulate. Okay? And currently, uh, Professor Yamamoto is using soft coag effect 560 watt for the small sized coagraspa. I heard uh, uh, Professor Yasaki uh, lecture of the Duodenal du ESD. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah and it, it was very good. <laughs> yeah, duodenal ESD is much more uh, dangerous. Uh, therefore, we have to carefully coagulate the every exposed blood vessels using the small sized coagraspa or bipolar forceps. But at the same time, you have to be careful not to coagulate the muscle layer itself. Yeah, that's right. In case of coagulating muscle layer, it sometimes causes uh, perforation after the procedure. Therefore, uh, we usually uh, try to uh, wash the lumen using normal saline to give some additional fluid cushion within the remaining submucosal layer. Then we can apply uh, coagulation current to the exposed blood vessels. As you can see, there is a fold uh, of the, the muscle layer here, like the fold coming from this fold, this fold, this fold goes um, under the lesion, but uh, using a pocket creation method, I could um, pass the, I could press down the, press down the, the fold, like this, and selectively, uh, I can change the direction. Not only pressing down to the muscle side, I could pull up to the mucosal side if, I, if you create a, a submucosal pocket. Then you can change the direction to the tangential uh, way. That is the best direction for submucosal dissection in ESD. Okay, that's all uh, about my procedure. Okay, can I get a net? Thank you very much. So uh, do you usually uh, perform ESD using this technique regardless of size of the target region in the colon? If the region is uh, um, yeah, very small, but in that case I use EMR. Ah, yes, sure. So, uh, and if the region is small, but if there is a fibrosis, severe fibrosis, I use pocket creation method. And large... Uh, lesions, I use pocket creation method. So most of the lesions, I use pocket creation method now. So how do you perform the submucosal dissection in case of having a big lesion with severe scar at the central part of the uh, target lesion? Uh, that's a very good question. If there is a fibrosis, severe fibrosis, if the, if the fibrosis is here, then I will not attack the fibrosis uh, directly. I will create a pocket, uh, both sides of the fibrosis, P create a pocket and create a pocket and uh, the center fibrous tissue uh, remains 
then I can follow the, the level of muscle layer, and then um, the, the muscle layer looks like the uh, a mountain side. Then I can see the cutting line uh, at the fibrotic area as well. Then I cut the fibrotic tissue, and uh, when I cut the fib very, very severe fibrosis, I use end cut eye uh, with duration very short, one. And effect one, duration one. And then uh, little by little, I cut uh, the fibrosis. So you usually don't use coagulation current when you dissect the severe fibrosis? Very severe fibrosis, I, I use a, a very short duration end cut. Mm -hmm. That's a very good idea. Uh, okay. At the time, Net? do you usually Net? use flash knife, flash knife to cut some, some fibrosis? Usually with flash knife, but Net? very, very severe fibrosis, I use a needle knife, and the tr conventional needle knife. That is uh, a bit long, but uh, as long as I use with uh, ST hood, I can adjust the, the length of the, um, the, the, from the tip of the hood. Then by using the tip of the needle knife, I cut, I precisely aim at the cutting line because the tip of the needle knife can be visualized endoscopically using a long needle knife. Okay, any questions from the audience? Dr. Yamamoto, yes? may I ask a question? Yes. Uh, so I remember you use a ST short food when you dissect by a flash knife, but you change the food when you dissect by the safe knife. Is it right? No, I use the same hood. I use this uh, uh, ST hood uh, from the beginning to the end. The Using this ST hood, I could go into the submucosal space and I use the flash knife to create the pocket. And a uh, safe knife can be used with uh, this ST hood as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm? Net, oh. Net, oh, okay. Now Dr. Yamamoto is trying, uh, oh. trying to retrieve this resected specimen using net. But I think that the transparent hood is uh, good enough to catch the resected specimen okay. because this specimen okay. is not so uh, big. Probably uh, we Yamamoto can suck sensei. it. Yes? Yamamoto sensei. Hi, hi. There is a, a question from the floor. Can you exp uh, please go ahead? Oh, excellent skill, thank you. And yeah, I have okay. one question, okay? Yeah. And uh, when I perform uh, colon ESD, sometimes using the pocket creation method, okay. and uh, I always wonder uh, how long uh, we, should, I sh we should make uh, some causal tunnel, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some causal tunnel sometimes and uh, uh, determine the end of the tunnel. And, uh, now, of course, uh, we must make, uh, we must need the, uh, make some kind of tunnel over the tumor and yeah. uh, one more, uh, one more, yeah. one, cent one, one centimeters. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes I think that it's difficult, and where I am, the uh, my, my state, my position is where I am. And yes. What do you think about yes. the submucosa tunnels uh, and the? Uh, Rings. Yeah, I agree with your uh, yeah, opinion. With your, uh, Sometimes uh, it's opinion. difficult to Sometimes precisely measure the uh, depth of the tunnel, and uh, uh, it's very. It's sometimes difficult to match the uh, length of the pocket and uh, on the edge of the lesion. But uh, it's not that uh, um, important. Not, not that necessary, mandatory to match uh, exactly the, oh, excuse me, the edge of the uh, tumor and the depth of the uh, pocket. The, uh, actually, this time, I create a pocket a little bit too uh, too much, and uh, I passed the, the edge of the lesion. 
But uh, uh, then when I open the mucosa, uh, the dissection is finished already. And sometimes uh, the, the, um, when I opening the pocket, the dissection is not deep enough. In that case, uh, you can make the, whenever you find out that the pocket is not deep enough, you can make the pocket deeper. And um, after opening a little bit on, of the side of the, uh, the mucosa. So in that way, you can adjust the, the depth of the pocket and uh, the extent of the lesion at the end of the procedure. Okay? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome.